This Mass is celebrated for all our loved ones and especially for those who have memorials established at the Polish Heritage Center. Today I will read the names of people who have passed since our last memorial mass a year ago. John Baker, Elaine Boltz, Rita Bozinski, Jane Zarnick, Emil, du Emil Dubas, Eldon Dubas, Lawrence and Nellie Dush, Ethel May Gappa, Sandra Glazer, Father Stanley Gorick, Gertrude Gorick, Gary Greenland, William Grigusky, Arnold Grzynski, Dennis Hendrickson, Arnold Jacobuski, Alice Yaratowski Walter, Jim Kava, Alan Kit Keith, Larry Kapersky, Evelyn Kosmicki, Bob Kowalski, Larry Kranz, Leonard Cush, Louis Cush, Maxine Lewandowski, Charlene Lewandowski, Don Lenusky, Phyllis Lukasevich Piata, Urshio Moshka, Philomena Majeski, <coughs> Carl and Louise Merritt, Laverne Marachik, Dale Nowak, Mary Obermiller, Jim Palu, Tom Podraza, Don Sawicki, Bob Spano, Dorothy Spatansky Kwapneski, Mary Frances Stovey, Don Urkowski, <coughs> Marciana Wojtohowski, Janine Wojtolevich, Roger Wysocki, Gary Yurkowski, Philip Yurkowski, Fritz Yurkowski. Music for this Mass is provided by the three guys in the band and our organist Amy Kowalski. Please welcome our celebrant for this Mass, our pastor, Father Richard Kinkuski. Join us on our opening song. Number seven in your little white booklets. Come let us worship. Number seven. Please stand.
welcome Father Lou Nollett, uh, our, one of our previous pastors here in Ashton, now one of our retired priests. Uh, interesting, he grows uh, grapes, makes wine in his retirement, and that's why he says he looks so good. <laughs> we welcome him this morning in a very special way. Now let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my faults, through my faults, through my unspeakable faults. Therefore, I ask of the Spirit of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray. God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. This says the Lord, You, son of man, I have appointed watchmen for the house of Israel. When you hear me say anything, you shall warn them for me. If I tell the wicked, O wicked one, you shall surely die, and you do not speak out to dissuade the wicked from his way, the wicked shall die for his guilt. But I will hold you responsible for his death. But if you warn the wicked, trying to turn him from his way, and he refuses to turn from his way, he shall die for his guilt. But you shall save yourself. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Matthew. Glory 
Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have won over your brother. If he does not listen, take one or two others along with you, so that every fact may be established on the testimony of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell the church. And if he refuses to listen even to the church, then treat them as you would a Gentile or tax collector. Amen, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Amen, amen, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything for which they are to pray, it shall be granted to them by my heavenly Father. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome all to our annual Polish uh, Heritage uh, Festival uh, here in Ashton. Always a wonderful thing. I think last year, uh, this completed one year here as pastor, uh, this I think was the first thing I, I had to do and uh, very, very enjoyable. So welcome to all. And I know you're all looking at your watch because they begin serving at 11 o'clock. <laughs> see a few people leave, we'll have to lock the doors. <laughs> a reminder that we have actually a special collection today after the regular collection for hurricane relief. Uh, so please be aware of that. If you brought your envelope today for West Nebraska Register, please put that in the regular uh, collection and we'll sort that out. Uh, also just a note for uh, Loop City people or Ashton people that go to Mass in Loop City, uh, our daily Mass schedule will be now on Mondays and Wednesdays at 11 a.m. We had to change that to accommodate some people and it's, it's a good change. So uh, actually the Mass tomorrow is here at noon. Uh, but regularly when we have Mass in Loop City on Mondays and Wednesdays, that will now be at 11 a.m. I was uh, speaking this past week with one of our fundamentalist uh, brothers uh, who was uh, quoting a lot of Bible numbers to me. And he would ask certain things like, Father, what do you think about 1 Thessalonians 6, 1 through 9? And I told him, those are beautiful numbers. I've always enjoyed those numbers. <laughs> and, uh, maybe at the roulette table in a couple of weeks, I'll be able to use them. And he said, well, do you, you don't know the passage. Well, I said, those numbers are fine, but give me the passage. Just quote a couple words. And he did, and I finished the passage for him. I, did, I didn't learn, I read the Bible every day, but I mean, I didn't learn it by the numbers. I didn't think that was the important thing. Uh, but, you know, we, we discussed everything, and, and we agreed on a bunch of stuff, and I, I always have to needle our uh, more fundamentalist brothers and sisters on occasion. For instance, him, I said, you know, one of these days I'm going to buy a Bible, because the library keeps wanting theirs back. <laughs> so I hate to return it and recheck it out every two weeks. So, but uh, I probably shouldn't do that. But we did agree. <laughs> of course, on Jesus Christ as Savior, and on good and evil, right and wrong. And when we look at the readings today, what we see is this implied there is a right and there is a wrong. We need to follow the right and not do the wrong, do as much good as possible and as little evil as necessary. That is part of the readings in Ezekiel and Matthew, we talk about, you know, correcting others, Ezekiel and Jesus saying, we need to correct others in an appropriate way. And Paul reminds us in that second reading that our correction is not, not out of spite, it's not out of revenge, it's not out of anger, our correction must always be out of love. So that when we do anything to correct another person, 
Our only motivation can be love, and that's what we do in our families, with our children, that's what we do with others. We don't like to correct other people necessarily, but at times it becomes necessary for us to point out maybe those actions you're doing aren't so good. But again, the motivation can only be love. Uh, in this day and age, and it's happened historically before, this is nothing new, there's this disease out there called relativism. Uh, relativism says, well, you can believe whatever you want. It doesn't make any difference whatever. Belief doesn't make a, a point of difference. So you can believe or actually do anything you want. It's all relative. So I can believe I can step on your toes. But you believe I shouldn't be stepping on your toes. The whole relativism thing, uh, it, it's absurd in its face and in its logic. There is a definite objective right and there's an objective wrong. Now sometimes the wrong can be excused for, for instance, somebody does something wrong and they're a mentally ill person. There are all sorts of those things. But our belief does not change what's right or wrong. If I believe something is right that is wrong, I don't change that. My belief changes nothing about what God has set up as right and wrong. I knew, a, a, I still know, a young man in, in North Platte that several years ago, he believed the water he was diving into in Lake Maloney, south of North Platte, was six feet deep. It did not change the reality that it was one foot deep. And he's a quadriplegic to this day. Belief doesn't change the reality of good and evil. Our belief doesn't change. But we do have this thing that God gives us called common sense. And common sense is what built this area, built our church, built the town, built up the farms and everything else. It was not a relativism. Relativism can't build anything because I'll do what I want to do. It was people coming together with this common sense and doing things correctly as far as they could. And that's this historical thing that we receive from our ancestors that I, maybe I'm a little bit prejudiced here, but I think is indigenous to uh, the central states, and we've got a lot of common sense, and we instill that in our children. And that's a wonderful thing, because you see other areas, well, do whatever you want to do. Everything's fine. Well, no, it doesn't quite work that way. God has set a divine law and a natural law, and these are the things that, that we follow. And when we find ourselves, we need to correct ourselves, too, at times when we know we're doing something wrong and we have to try to do the right. But again, when we're trying to correct ourselves, we don't correct ourselves in anger. Correct yourself out of love. Don't correct another again out of anger or spite. Correct another out of love. Where two or three are gathered, I am in their midst. Where we are now gathered, Jesus is here in his word. Jesus will be here with the Eucharist. And so we give thanks to God that he has given us this wisdom to know right from wrong and to follow his path. And we ask the Lord to help us to do as much good in this world as possible and as little evil as necessary. Yeah. 
rejoicing in our Heavenly Father's many gifts, we confidently approach Him with all of our prayers. Responses, Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us here today, that we renew our faith, hope, and love for Jesus, who is our way, our truth, and our life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders of nations, that they may work for health and well-being of all their people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all that have died, especially those remembered in our Polish Heritage Memorial Board, that they may enjoy the peace and happiness of our Lord's kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the sick and the suffering, that they may experience the healing power of our Lord, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the efforts of the members of the Polish, Polish Heritage Center may be blessed in helping to preserve and spread the appreciation of our Polish culture. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us now pause in silence to add our own special intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, God of mercy, hear the prayers of our lips and the prayers of our hearts and grant what we truly need through Christ our Lord. Our offertory song is number three in your booklet, Blue Skirt Waltz, number three.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our loving Father. O oh God, who give us the <coughs> grace, the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and by partaking of the sacred mystery, we may be faithfully united in mind and heart. Through Christ our Lord. Ciao. 
promise of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and praise you and glorify you through Christ, through your Son, Jesus Christ. <coughs> through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the whole Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. <laughs>
First communion song is number two in your booklet, Christ is Knocking.
information is number 10, going back to my homeland. Second of all, if you could leave your little books um, back in the box there at the back of the church for us, we would appreciate it. Our closing song this morning is number nine, Jesus is Our King, number nine. Thank you. 
I'll give you one for going out. One pound. What's that?